It's pretty easy to make a simple naming conlang, just a few words or phrases that sound cohesive, but what if you want to make something more grandiose? A comprehensive language that you could translate word for word, like Tolkien's Sindarin, Ocran's Klingon, Frommer's Navi, or the version of Dothraki created by Peterson for HBO. Creating a comprehensive language is a huge topic, but that doesn't mean it has to be something scary that's only for linguists and hardcore world builders. While we can't cover everything in a single video, we can get you past the most intimidating parts and onto the fun stuff. To create a comprehensive language, you'll need to decide a few fundamental elements. Phonetics, root words, and grammar. Once you have those, the rest is a playground of exploration and invention. To start, you'll want to choose your language's phonetics. Creating a list of sounds will make your conlang appear more consistent and give you a good basis to make words from later. It's helpful to break out the International Phonetic Alphabet again to figure out what sounds you want to use. This may look a bit daunting, but you don't have to dig into the distinctions between phonemics, phonetics, and all that jazz. To keep it simple, you can just use the audio table in the references down below for inspiration. <laughs> As you select your sounds, create a phonetic inventory for your language, a grid showing the sounds in use. You can check out the charts in other languages for inspiration. That can help replicate the sound of another language, or just show you what sounds are commonly used together. Note though that it's best to start small when choosing your sounds. You only need a few to move on to the next step, and you can always add more as your language grows. Once you have your sounds, it's time to create a few root words. Exactly what they mean will be dependent on the people's culture. For example, a forest-dwelling people might have words like she, cut, and tree. This is as easy as assembling sounds in an order you like. Just make sure you have a healthy mix of nouns and verbs. Can't forget those verbs, since all those nouns need something to do. You'll need enough words to complete a simple sentence like, she cut trees, which contains a subject, verb, and object. These are the building blocks for communication in every existing language, but they aren't always in that order. Another common variant is subject, object, verb, like in Japanese or Latin, but there are more than just those two. Some languages change their verbs depending on the subject. This is called conjugation. Traditionally, we break this down into the three point of views, and each one has a singular form and a plural form. Your verbs might change for each form, like many verbs in Spanish do, or they might not, like some words in English. Let's take our verb dufa, for example. I want my language to conjugate differently for first person subjects, so dufa is the infinitive, to cut. For first person, we can change the last sound in the verb, dufo, then the rest, dufi. We could apply similar rules to our other verbs. If our rules don't end up sounding right, though, we could return to the drawing board or create irregular verbs, which is super common. Many languages, like Spanish, will alter their conjugations to show when the verb happens, but others use modifiers to show tenses instead. English tends to use a mix of these two, altering conjugation for the past tense while adding modifiers for the future. When it comes to conjugation, you can make your language as simple or complicated as you like. It adds a lot of complexity, but isn't really required. After all, the world's second most spoken language doesn't conjugate anything. Like with any other part of this process, there's no strictly right or wrong answer. Just look at English. This, this isn't conjugation, it, it's madness. Once you've established some rules for sounds, grammar, and syntax, you can start developing more of your lexicon. Create some root words, and from those, form new terms by compounding them. Not every language uses compounding words, but it's an easy way to start building your lexicon. Remember that languages are part of a living world and change with time. As your conlang grows, consider what other languages it might have come into contact with and adopted words from. 
Idioms and expressions are also a great way to flex our world-building muscles. They're the direct result of the people's culture, things they encounter often, care a great deal about, or just find funny. After all, no language stays the same, words and dialects form and disappear and change all the time. Just look at Old English. They bowen, they bonkers, they're boas, they're barra. They clumben by cliffes, they're clangus, the colder. They haven was a palt, but ugly they're under. Mist mugged on the moor, malt on the muntis, each hill had... Yeah, it's changed a little bit. Finally, there's one last thing to consider. The script. But we'll have to hit that in another video. But suffice it to say, the script isn't required. Not every language is written, after all. Plus, you might not want to use a custom script depending on your medium. But don't worry, we'll cover all that soon, so keep an eye out for scripts later. For now, though, focus on building your phonetic inventory, lexicon, and language rules. Don't forget about the world building, though. The best conlangs reflect the places and cultures they're born from. Thanks for watching.